Hi everyone, this is Dr. Nitin Shoda and welcome to this episode of Ignition Time. Thank you so much for being a viewer. Thank you so much for being a subscriber. I really appreciate you. If you learn something new from this video, please consider clicking subscribe. Please enable notifications and please gently, gently tap that like button. That would mean a lot to me. Let's just jump right in. According to brand new reporting and you'll see this article on your screen from CNBC, President Trump fears that Giuliani and other lawyers in the Biden vote challenge in the electoral process vote challenge are fools that are making him look bad. Yes, the president fears that these lawyers are fools that are making him look bad. Now, I did do other videos on our channel talking about some of this, uh, some of the interesting, somewhat bizarre allegations made by Rudy Giuliani and Sidney Powell, who's no longer on the Trump team. In fact, Sidney Powell was on the Trump team a few days ago, but she's no longer on the Trump team based on an announcement that was made yesterday by Rudy Giuliani and Jenna Ellis, who's another senior Trump advisor. So right now, there's a shakeup in the Trump team, if you will. And again, the president feels that these individuals, in other words, his, his lawyers, are, I quote, fools that are making him look bad. And President Trump is indeed worried that his legal team is not essentially doing as well as they, as well as they can. <clears throat> And this was reported by NBC News. Now, I just want to be clear. So far, Rudy Giuliani and the other lawyers on the Trump team have issued press conferences, but they haven't really achieved a lot with judges. They haven't received a lot of victories in a court of law. And, uh, you know, they, what they're trying to do is to overturn, uh, you know, the, the vote count, if you will, so that President Trump can get reelected. I just want to be clear. The former New Jersey governor, Chris Christie, who is one of the biggest allies of President Trump, has called uh, President President Trump's legal team, I quote, a national embarrassment. Yes. And, and here's the reason why. The president has had an opportunity to access the courts. And I said to you, you know, George, starting at 2.30 a.m. on Wednesday morning, if you've got the evidence of fraud presented. And what's happened here is, quite frankly, the conduct of the president's legal team has been a national embarrassment. Sidney Powell accusing Governor Brian Kemp of a crime on television, yet being unwilling to go on TV um, and defend and lay out the evidence that she supposedly has. Um, this is outrageous conduct by any lawyer. And notice, George, they won't do it inside the courtroom. They allege fraud outside the courtroom, but when they go inside the courtroom, they don't plead fraud and they don't argue fraud. This is what I was concerned about at 2.30 in the morning on Wednesday night. Listen, I've been a supporter of the president's. I voted for him twice. But elections have consequences. And we cannot continue to act as if something happened here that didn't happen. You have an obligation to present the evidence. The evidence has not been presented. And you must conclude, as Tucker Carlson even concluded the other night, that if you're unwilling to come forward and present the evidence, it must mean the evidence doesn't exist. That's what I was concerned about starting on election night. And I remain concerned today. I think it's wrong. I think what you've heard, lots of Republicans starting to say this. I said it on election night. And I hope more say it going forward because um, the country is what has to matter the most. As much as I'm a strong Republican and I love my party, it's the country that has to come from. Now, this legal team, which actually calls itself, I quote, an elite strike force team. Yes, this team calls itself an elite strike force team has failed to win any substantive legal victories that would invalidate votes for Biden. So, so far I'm reporting what's happening in the court of law. Please don't blame the messenger. So what's happening here is that that these lawyers have not been able to get the courts to be able to overturn a substantial number of votes to be able to change the electoral vote victory, if you will, for Biden. And they haven't been able to do that in a single state so far. That they're going to fix this election. I don't know what you need to wake you up to do your job and inform the American people, whether you like it or not, of the things they need to know. This is real. It is not made up. It is not. There's nobody here that engages in fantasies. I've tried 100 cases. I prosecuted some of the most dangerous criminals in the world. I know crimes. I can smell them. You don't have to smell this one. I can prove it to you 18 different ways. I can prove to you that he won Pennsylvania by 300,000 votes. I can prove to you that he won Michigan by probably 50,000 votes. When I went to bed on election night, he was ahead in all those states, every single one of those states. How is it they all turned around? Every single one of them turned around? Or is it more consistent that there was a plan to turn them around? And since there are witnesses who say there was a plan to turn them around, and it kind of begs credulity to say that it all happened in every single state, my goodness, this is how you win cases in a courtroom. Sir, is your goal to pressure officials and lawmakers in the battleground states to block or delay certification so the GOP can pick their own electors? Is that the end game here? Our goal here is to go around the iron curtain of censorship. That uh, What publication are you with? 
It's to go around uh, the outrageous Iron Curtain of censorship and get facts to the American people that if you were a fair and honest network, you'd have been reporting for the last two weeks. These are facts. These are things that actually happened. These people really wrote these affidavits. These affidavits are really part of the public record. You're concealing them. You're covering them up. And our role here is to do your job because you don't do it. Let's take a look at what Chris Christie actually said in the past couple of days. He said, listen, I've been a supporter of the president. I've voted for him twice, but elections have consequences and we cannot continue to act as if something happened here that didn't happen. He said the alleged fraud, he's referring to President Trump's legal team, the alleged fraud outside the courtroom, but when they go inside the courtroom, they don't plead fraud and they don't argue fraud. You have an obligation to present the evidence. The evidence has not been presented. Again, this is according to Chris Christie, one of the staunchest allies of the president. Now here's a tweet on your screen from Frank Luntz who's a political and communications consultant and this is what Frank wrote. Recurring theme, what seems effective in press conferences doesn't actually work in courtrooms. He also went on to say, and no, I'm not saying that Trump's legal team's press conferences have been effective. Now here's a tweet on your screen from Brad Heath. Now Brad is a DC reporter for Reuters on crime and justice. So here's what Brad wrote in one of his tweets. He wrote, a federal judge has dismissed President Trump's lawsuit seeking to overturn the results of the election he lost in Pennsylvania. Now, I know this news is from a couple of days ago, but it's very important that my viewers and subscribers pay attention to what I'm about to tell you in the next few minutes, because what I'm about to tell you will show you and will demonstrate a reoccurring trend, or I should say a lack of a trend, a lack of a strategy in what we are seeing emerging from behind the courtroom. So Brad writes, the decision is pretty brutal. He sums up Trump's case as a strained legal arguments without merit and speculative accusations. So here's what the judge wrote. One might expect that when seeking such a startling outcome, a plaintiff would come formidably armed with compelling legal arguments and factual proof of rampant corruption such, such that this court would have no option but to regrettably grant the proposed injunctive relief despite the impact it would have on such a large group of citizens. That has not happened. Instead, this court has been, has been presented with strained legal arguments without merit and speculative accusations uh, unpled in the operative complaint and unsupported by the evidence. Pretty interesting comments from a judge, guys. Here's another tweet on your screen, also from Brad. This is a theme. Trump's legal team made a total hash of his case. This is not the kind of thing you see in cases that have been litigated well. Here's something that is essentially a legal ruling. Instead, count one discusses the use of standardless procedures. These are two separate theories of an equal protection violation. The, deficien the deficiency aside, to the extent this new theory is even pled, plaintiffs fail to plausibly plead that there was, I quote, uneven treatment of Trump and Biden watchers and representatives. Um, and, you know, there are certain paragraphs devoted to this alleged disparity. None of these paragraphs support plaintiff's argument. And, you know, then there are some examples like defendants have not allowed watchers and representatives to be present. This tells you that the judge is saying, hey, dude, what kind of lawyering is this? This just doesn't make sense. And, you know, no go. Um, and if you thought that was uh, that was all there is to it, here's another tweet on your screen from Brad. The campaign's theory that its poll watchers were denied access isn't an equal protection violation because they didn't allege that Biden's got better access. Without actually alleging that one group was treated differently than another, plaintiff's first argument falls flat. Can you believe that? So, you know, I'll read out again from the uh, from the legal ruling here. None of these allegations or the others in this section claim that the Trump campaign watchers were treated differently than the Biden campaign's watchers. Simply alleging that poll watchers did not have access or were denied access to some areas does not plausibly does not does not plausibly plead unequal treatment without actually alleging that one group was treated differently than another. Plaintiff's first argument falls flat. I think you're starting to see a pattern here. Let's take a look at another another tweet from Brad, and this tweet reads: The judge said Trump's lawyers did not understand Bush v. Gore. You'll see this, you'll see this message on your screen. Likewise, plaintiffs cannot salvage their notice and cure theory by invoking Bush v. Gore. Plaintiffs claim that the Equal Protection Clause imposes a minimum requirement for non-arbitrary treatment of voters and forbids voting systems and practices that distribute resources in standardless fashion without specific rules designed to ensure uniform treatment. Plaintiffs attempt to craft a legal theory from Bush, but they fail. Now, this is the important part. 
they fail because they misapprehend the issues at play in that case and the facts of this case are distinguishable. Basically, the judge is saying, you didn't understand Bush v. Gore and this situation is completely different, so you don't know what you're talking about. I hope you folks are seeing a pattern over here. Look, I know, I know that I have supporters of President Trump on my channel. I know I have supporters of, you know, of Biden on my channel. This is not about, you know, trying to uh, hurt one side. This is about reading and interpreting arguments and decisions in a court of law. We are a country of laws. We are not a banana republic where anyone can do what they want and anyone can allege what they want and people can just come to their own conclusions. We have to understand and respect our system of uh, our court of our courts of law. And that's what you know, that's that's what this channel is all about. This channel is about the country. This channel is about the economy and this channel is about money. All of this does have an impact on our national security because at the end of the day, we don't want foreign leaders, you know, foreign leaders like Putin are trying to chime in on, you know, whether they recognize the our electoral process or not. So we shouldn't be giving an opportunity to foreign leaders to be able to essentially, you know, enjoy our, uh, you know, our our differences and, uh, or, or, you know, the chaos that's going on in, in our country right now. So anyway, here's another tweet on your screen from Brad. The court dismisses Trump's case with prejudice and denies permission to file an amended complaint to restore some of the arguments his lawyers said they removed from the case by mistake. It would merely unduly delay resolution of these matters. And you see that and you see the legal ruling on your screen here as well. Given that plaintiffs have already amended once as of right, plaintiffs seek to amend simply in order to effectively reinstate their initial complaint and claims. So basically the deadline for counties in Pennsylvania to certify the election results is November 23rd. Amem amendment would unduly delay resolution of these issues. Basically what's happening is the judge is saying hey you know I'm not on your side that's basically what's happening right now and speaking of judges not being on the side of the campaign on your screen right now you'll see some phenomenal information that was actually reported by the Associated Press we'll provide you with a link in the description section below so you can see the resolution of all these court cases this is right in front of you for you to see for the whole world to see you'll see this entire sort of chart on your screen which shows you the state in which actions were filed the court in which actions were filed uh, what the plaintiffs are seeking, in other words, what President, Trump, what President Trump's team is seeking, and then the decision by the actual judge in that state. Let's start with Arizona, case dismissed on uh, November 30th. Then in the next case, a judge on Thursday rejected the Republicans' bid to postpone the certification of election results and dismiss the party's legal challenge that sought a new audit of a sampling of ballots. In another case, plaintiffs agreed to dismiss the case. In another case, a judge dismissed the case on November 13th. In, in another case, and this case was in Georgia Federal Court, plaintiffs voluntarily dropped their case on the 16th of November. So you're starting to see a trend here. And now hopefully you'll start to understand why the, why the president has a certain opinion, if you will, of his legal team. Let's take a look at the next uh, section here. In Georgia Federal Court, a judge on November 19th denied a request for a temporary restraining order. In, a, in another case in Georgia, a judge dismissed the lawsuit. In another case, plaintiffs voluntarily dismissed their case. Plaintiffs voluntarily dismissed their case on November 16th in Michigan. Trump's campaign withdrew their lawsuit on November 19th in Michigan. So you get a clear sense of where things are headed right now. Let's take a look at other things in Michigan. A, a judge denied the request saying they have offered, I quote, no evidence to support their assertions. Another judge denied the request on November 13th in Michigan. Another judge denied the request also in Michigan. So you can see that there have been a lot of requests that were denied in Nevada. A state judge denied the request for an injunction. Another court case in Nevada was dismissed at the request of the Trump campaign. In another case, a judge denied an immediate injunction to stop the vote count. In another case in Pennsylvania, plaintiffs voluntarily withdrew their case on November 16th. In yet another case in federal court in Pennsylvania, plaintiffs withdrew their case. In other words, the Trump team said, whoops, we're withdrawing. So there's something different going on in the court of public opinion and what is actually going on in a court of law. And listen, this channel is for those who, who want the truth, who can handle the truth, who can digest the truth and who want real news and real information. So if you're going to freak out, then, you know, I mean, what can I say? I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> so Pennsylvania, a judge rejected the case on November 13th. In another case in Pennsylvania, a judge on November 19th denied the president's bid to invalidate the ballots. And so, you know, you can start to see a trend here. Another case in Pennsylvania where a judge on November 13th refused to reject the ballots saying no fraud was, was, no fraud was found. So another case in Pennsylvania federal court where a judge dismissed the case on November 21st, writing the campaign presented 
I quote, strained legal arguments without merit and speculative accusations unsupported by evidence. So you can start to see again a trend here. Another case in Pennsylvania on November 13, the federal appeals court upheld the three-day extension. And, you know, also in Pennsylvania, a judge ordered on November 5th that party and candidate observers be allowed to get closer. This was at election time. And in Wisconsin federal court, plaintiffs voluntarily dropped their case on November 16. So let me know what you think of these uh, of what is happening in the court of law, what apparently the president is saying, and the clear and obvious shakeup in the Trump team. This is important for our, for our country, and by extension, it's important for our economy, because the economy cannot handle more and more fights, more and more legal arguments, more and more finger pointing. We need to be able to come to some sort of a consensus. Let me know what you think about this news in the comment section below. You'll also find a link to all of our resources, including the phenomenal reporting from the Associated Press in the comments in the description section below. So definitely check that out as well. Thank you so much for watching everybody. My name is Dr. Nitin Choda with Ignition Time. I hope you learned something new from this video. If you did, please gently, gently tap that like button, ignite the subscribe button, ignite that notification button. That would be your vote of confidence in us and that really helps out the YouTube algorithm that tells YouTube that you found this content valuable. If you don't know anything about me, please check out my video. You'll learn more about who I am, what my journey has been like and why you should listen to me. We release videos at 2 p.m. East Coast time most days of the week. That's 2 p.m. East Coast time most days of the week. Get your cell phone out, send a text message with the word ignition or with the word time to 70,000. That's 70000. You'll get added to SMS alerts list. You can also, if you want, get added to our email list. Simply go to ignitiontime.com forward slash alerts. That's ignitiontime.com forward slash alerts. You can opt out of the SMS list or the email list at any point in time that you want. No worries about that. Now, sometimes YouTube does not always send out notifications on time. So all you have to do is simply bookmark youtube.com forward slash ignition time. That's youtube.com forward slash ignition time. And then you'll be able to visit the homepage of our channel and watch our videos at any point in time that you want. Make sure you do that. That would be greatly appreciated. This way you're not dependent on the YouTube notifications. You can also follow us on Instagram. Our Instagram handle is ignition underscore time. That's ignition underscore time. You can also follow us on Twitter. Our Twitter handle is also ignition underscore time. That's ignition underscore time. So we look forward to sharing breaking news and alerts with you on Twitter. Now, if you, if you found this video beneficial, please consider sharing this video with friends and family. Please don't forget to click the like button because that really would mean a lot to us. Please comment below. Our community is intelligent, is bipartisan. Our community is, is looking forward to interacting with you. And I'm very proud of our community because, you know, we, we are Americans first. I want to be clear for us at the Ignition Time channel, it's not about the red or the blue. It's about the red, white and blue. I'm not Democrat. I'm not Republican. I'm American. As always, you'll find a link to all of our resources in the description section below. So make sure you check out the description section below if you want to get more information about the content that we cover. And finally, finally, please subscribe. Please enable notifications. That again would be your vote of confidence in us. And that tells the YouTube algorithm that this was beneficial. Thank you so much for watching. I'm looking forward to seeing you in the next episode of Ignition Time. Take care. Bye.